um, 70s, 80s rock at that time when I was mm -hmm. that, that age. And Eddie, he was totally into new metal. Um, you know, he was growing like dreads and stuff like that. At this oh, time. yeah. Always coming to school with our Slipknot shirts. And, and then we had like a bunch of goth kids that we always hung out with and some punks. This podcast is about you, your journey in music. We'll talk yeah. uh, all about the new record. Yeah, yeah. It sounds great. Thank you. Thank you. Cool, cool. Uh, so, Harold, where were you born and raised? Um, I was born in, um, it's actually the mid parts of Sweden, but it's sort of considered the north. It's a, a small town called Hudiksvall, uh, right. which is a town which, I don't know, like I think maybe tops 25, 30,000 people. So it's pretty small. Wow, small. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's about two and a half hours drive north of Stockholm. Um, so yeah, that's where I grew up. I moved down here to the very south, like southernmost part of the country when I was about 12 years old. Okay. So I lived here for the most part of my life. Uh, and by that time I moved to like a, an even, even like smaller location. It was just a little, little village, you know, somewhere like out in the, you know, <laughs> far out in the countryside basically. Uh, so that's where I grew up, but I moved into Malmö about 10 years ago, which is uh, the third biggest city, uh, we have here in Sweden. Which obviously, like, you know, in, in your measures, it's not big, but uh, for us, it's, it's, yeah, quite decent. Yeah. Okay. So you went from the north all the way down to the south end, and then now stayed, you're stayed, in. No, no, I stayed in the south. Like, we're still in Malmo. So, yeah. Okay. So now you're in the state in the south. Okay. Well, with moving from the north to, you said, a small village in the south, was that a bit different lifestyle? Um, yeah. I mean, like, the way I grew up was, really like you know we just had a we had a house really far out from the city i mean not too far it was about like 30 minutes drive or something mm -hmm. but um you know we were living close to the forest and close to the to the seaside um very like you know i have very nice memories from there like from my childhood um, were you so outdoors I, a lot i would imagine yeah definitely yeah definitely we had like we went fishing a lot like me and my dad and so yeah a lot of nice memories from that time so going down to the south, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, around that age, like when you when you like just entering your teens, like when mm -hmm. you're getting like 13 years old or 14 and, and those, I mean, that's pretty much when you, I think you shape like a lot of your personality, you meet like very meaningful people, um, like really important friends. And mm -hmm. like, you, I think that's, that came sort of like, did a huge thing for my, yeah, my upbringing, you know, those years when I moved into a new, new town, a new city and got to meet new people that still are my best friends today and also band members actually <laughs> so, oh wow so you met some of the guys in the band back yeah I mean, yeah, I knew, yeah i knew eddie like i've known eddie since he was 13 or 14 wow actually, yeah we were in school together we had french class together <laughs> that's how we knew each other oh that's awesome that yeah. is awesome yeah. well prior to moving down and meeting eddie were you in music at all um no, actually, I was in, when I was a kid, I was in theater class. Really? Yeah, yeah, I was. I took some, I mean, I took maybe two or three piano lessons, but I thought it was just so boring to have that sort of format, like when you had to sit with a teacher and they had to like. Oh, of course. You. Yeah, yeah. So, so no, no, I was, I, I always had that sort of interest for, for you know, aesthetic uh, expression, you know, culture, mm -hmm. cultural expression or whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. uh, very important for me. So that's why I was into theater and acting uh, when I was, yeah, when I was little. But no, not before that. I remember when I had a, I had a friend when I was maybe 14, you know, in high school. And mm -hmm. um, he had an acoustic guitar at home. Like, you have to understand that I had no, like, input from music in my family at all. Like, nobody else is into that. Um, nowadays, my, my younger brother is, but I think he was a bit inspired by me. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, this was the first time that I, like, you know, encounter like an, 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 an instrument that I really enjoyed. So every time, you know, when you went to his house, I would sit in the corner and just play his guitar. And he showed me how to play like this basic riff, like Smoke in the Water or Iron Man or whatever. Right. Yeah. yeah. It was so, it was like so cool. That was, that was the best thing I just could think of doing. And, um, you know, within time, I convinced my mom to buy me this really, really cheap, uh acoustic guitar it's like that the kind of brand that if you would go to like i don't know like you guys probably have walmart over there or something you right. go there and you buy like something they have in store okay this is a guitar or something you just grab it so okay that, that's a basic off brand thing. just yeah really off brand thing. Yeah. okay 
And did you play that for a while? Do you still have that guitar? No, I unfortunately don't. Uh, I I played it probably so much until it broke. (laughs) (laughs) Nothing left of it, basically. Sure, Uh, sure. Yeah, so that's how it started. So you said you didn't have real musical influences and as far as like, so no one else in your family plays an instrument and it really wasn't around the house a whole lot or what? No, not at all, actually. Like uh, my dad enjoyed music but was not like big listener or anything but it was just just nothing that everybody you know i think everyone likes music obviously but nobody were into like playing an instrument or singing or anything like this not not like that no um uh, well well you know my my dad's wife at that time yeah she played a bit of piano but uh, it was nothing that really interested me so much um Mm -hmm. but yeah, it wasn't until I really had that moment, you know, when somebody instructed me and showed me how to play a few chords and just some parts on the guitar, which was just, you know, really life changing for me. It, right. it really was. And that was a big, you know, big excuse for me to go to his house and hang out with him just so I could play his instrument you know, until I got my own. So, sure. <laughs> uh, and then when you got the guitar, did you stay friends? <laughs> or yeah, were you like, yeah, well, yeah, we, we tried to be a band, you know, you know we played okay. like a group. Some, you know but but it just didn't work out so much unfortunately but then I bought, I bought like no I got an electric guitar actually for as a Christmas present when I was maybe 15 or something and uh, yeah so then then I was like a step ahead of him so he had to come to my place and uh, oh you know. play the plugged in <laughs> instrument I got yeah. you oh yeah definitely okay okay and you said you met Eddie in what in high school also around the same time yeah 13 14 years old um, was he playing and i know he plays violin but was he in like were you guys did you connect like on a musical level at that early age or was he in a band or were you in a band yeah that was how it worked like because we i knew he played at that time i don't think he played really um because he had a break because i know he started when he was maybe five or six years old like that's usually usually when you start playing it like a classical instrument mm-hmm um but yeah we definitely connected because we were a bit of outsiders it was a super small high school um in a village in the southernmost part of sweden you know uh, mm-hmm. just setting the stage for you so you understand where we were at here you right know? um uh, and um so there were a couple of kids that were really outsiders and really a bit weird and you know i was one of them and Eddie was one of them as well and it, it was like we were just hanging out with each other we were you know i was into this old school hard rock heavy metal um 70s 80s rock at that time when i was mm-hmm. that that age and eddie he was totally into new metal um you know he was growing like dreads and stuff like that at this oh time. yeah always coming to school with our slipknot shirts and, and then we <laughs> had like a bunch of goth kids that we always hung out with and some punks and it was just um uh, yeah even though we didn't really all of us listen to the same music it was just that that understanding for each other that okay we are a bit you know we're not really like everyone else mm-hmm. so that's how we connected and um and that's really you know later on also when i got a bit older i still have some friends from from that time where i still you know connected them from time to time just uh, um yeah so i really think that was part of my life when i met some really important people for me mm-hmm. yeah. well then how do you go from you know a small town a small village in sweden to being in this massive band like tell me how the progression <laughs> of the band begins right i mean that's the uh, dream wow yeah um thank you for the compliment though but um well i think it started out with um we had an opportunity to to like rehearse for free even in this like small little town there was a guy who who was pretty involved in music and he really wanted to give uh, you know put his effort into um committing to young people and uh, mm-hmm. so he had like a rehearsal room where you can lend like a like a drum set and, and amps and stuff like that for free wow so, yeah it was really great um so we went there to rehearse um me and a couple of guys we, we started a band and, and at that time when we were like 15 we played we played pretty much two songs together we played like smells like teen spirit and, and killing in the name of that was the only two songs that we that we wow knew, but, Killing in the name, though, that's yeah. a that's pretty solid. Yeah, it was solid. That was the only two songs that we could play together, and it sounded horrible, of course. And it was the time where you really had to sort of convince your, your friends to be in the band with you. Like, oh, but yeah, yeah, I don't have time or whatever. I don't really play an instrument. Yeah, it doesn't matter, but just come here. You can play the bass or something with me. <laughs> and, and, and that's how it went. Like, 
it was just so hard to find people that were into that music and wanted to play an instrument and, and, and wanted to also be in a band. Mm -hmm. And obviously when, when you start off, you don't have no idea about what you're doing basically. You think as long as you just rehearse a lot and, uh, and just jam with your friends, it's gonna work out eventually. Um, and from, from that point, I think, yeah, it was a few years at, at that level, you know, where you were just a kid and just ha had a lot of fun with your friends and, and play the music you loved. Um, and, and, and later on, when we were like in our later teens, um, we were like in upper high school, that one of the projects that we were playing with, um, just or that I had started together with like a, a drummer at that time, it just, that became imminence later on. But I mean, it had nothing to do with the music that we that we're you know writing today. Mm -hmm. But that project sort of developed into imminence because Eddie was joining up on vocals and and Alex, you know, our, our guitar player, he mm -hmm. also joined in at that time. Um, he showed up to the first rehearsal. He didn't even bring his guitar. <laughs> I had to like I had to run home and get my second one. And that was that was the level you know, at, at at that time. Yeah. Uh, did he and, not have one? Yeah, of course he had one. He just didn't bring it because. Then how <laughs> did you get why. stuck going to get yours? <laughs> you yeah. didn't want to. You didn't send I, him to go get his own guitar. Uh, he lives so far away, so I was uh -oh. like, oh, no, I just got my. So you can play my <laughs> my backup one. Yeah, that's hilarious. Um, yeah, it was hilarious, really. Um, and um, so I, I think th this is about ten years ago, and mm -hmm. and at that time we we started to um, participate in like the local band talent shows because then we at least had some songs of our own like maybe two three really shitty songs but that's that's what we had right um, so we play the, yeah of course you play the local stage and uh, that's how it is and you play the cities around you i mean there was no the thing is like in sweden at that time um where we grew up there was like no there was no scene you know there was no metal or metalcore scene like you had to go pretty far into like the bigger cities if you wanted to go to to like a real concert um mm -hmm. but how long still, would that like, take you to get to like a bigger city like if you wanted to see a band maybe coming through like, town like how far would that or how long would it take you to get there at that time you could go to malma um which would be like one to one and a half hour drive um Still, but I mean, that's a commitment. You can't just go out on a Tuesday and, and catch a band play, right? I mean, no, no, that's no, the whole, you, like... Yeah, uh, you couldn't really do that. But, yeah, we, uh, you know how it goes in the beginning, and then you get some more shows here and there, and, um, yeah, you, you get to, like, do this exchange thing. Like, you know a band in the city, you go there to play, and you invite them out to play where you are. Um, and that's pretty much how it went. And, and eventually, like, you get a bit better... Uh, it takes you a lot of time in, in the beginning to get a bit better at, at writing songs and playing live and whatever. And and then I think we we went into the studio to do our first like more professional demo recording. Um, yeah, th this is al almost ten years ago. Mm -hmm. And at that time, it was um, also very like um, uh, very important lesson that I learned during that process because I really found out that I I, I sucked at guitar at that time. Um, <laughs> Why do you say yeah. that? Yeah, uh, because I, I I was sitting down to record it. I mean, you know, when the metronome was going on, I, I started playing with it. And our producer at that time, he was like, "Okay, let's do another take." Okay, oh, because the timing. Time. Yeah, yeah, I was pretty off. So he was like, "Okay, man, sorry, you got you got to move aside now." Alex, he had to like record all the parts. So that was really wow. a big change for me when I really like got into practicing. I practiced like so much after that. So with the a metronome. Next, yeah, of course. You know, with yeah. recording and learning how it works and. Uh, uh huh. I think, I think it's different home, but I mean, almost 10 years ago, you didn't really have that. It was not that right. common. Um, yeah. But, um, so are so, you talking about that first EP then? Um, yeah, it was actually a demo before that. So oh, the there first was a demo EP, before that. So yeah, did you did, play on the first EP then? A little bit, a little okay. bit, but not not very much. But this, <laughs> okay. the, the, the one after that, I, I was very involved, and in, that's where I really got more into uh, songwriting. And um, um, and yeah, I recorded a lot of guitars in the second EP. And then obviously after that, um, when we released the, the first EP called Return to Helios, mm -hmm. which I had like in 2013, we released a track called 
um, Wine and Water, which we made a video for. I don't know if it was the first music video we, we did. No, and it wasn't, but it was one of the first ones. And it premiered on a channel called Hardcore Worldwide um, that performed pretty well. I mean, at least for the time uh, where mm -hmm. we were at. So uh, I think that kind of caught some interest. We, we started working with American uh, like indie label at that time. Yeah, you got um, Sunday. We are triumphant records, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Wow, we the, which is yeah. huge. I mean, they're an imprint of Victory Records. Yeah, I mean, at that time, they I think they discovered and they, they had discovered a lot of bands that are doing fantastically well today. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, they really have a, a good sense of what can can work out in the future. Was that like yeah. a big? I would imagine that's a big moment for you guys in the band. Like you're getting reached out to by a, a known label, right? And then they're they have an interest in you. And at that time, yeah, it was really cool for sure. So, so that's when we wrote the first album called uh, I, um, mm. which was very, you know, alternative style, very like progressive in a way. Um, and on that album cycle, it was the first time we actually went touring. So, so in 2014, we went on our first uh, European tour, which was like 10 or 11 shows around Europe. Um, and it was just, so hard and it was you know the worst circumstances it was incredibly difficult um so the shows were not very um and well visited uh not mm -hmm. a lot of audi audience um we had to cover all the costs on our own oh, um wow. yeah that's how it is in the beginning like you don't yeah. you don't you don't sleep properly you don't eat properly you you get broke <laughs> you don't get paid sure, that's right yeah but it was if you just break incredible. even you're doing well kind of deal Oh, yeah. I mean, we never broke even. <laughs> we never broke even. Well, you got the experience. I mean, did you guys uh, go on a tour with somebody else or were you kind of the headlining band for this? So weird that we actually went on headlining at that time. But, you know, okay. obviously we didn't, we didn't pull anyone, we didn't pull any people, but we did. But it was obviously, of course, you know, it was just the best thing I've ever done in my life. You know, so I was just, this is incredible. This is exactly what I want to do. Mm hmm. Uh, we need to tour like we need to get out on the road so um i just decided that i have to book us some shows in europe because um well we didn't have an agent uh, we didn't really have any label support because that uh, we already parted ways with the with we are triumphant at that time okay you had at that point so but you put the first record out with them right the first yeah, album yeah, so yeah. you're talking about after that album cycle mm -hmm. and everything okay yeah yeah the year after basically um, so I just decided that, okay, I'm going to book a European tour. Um, and I didn't know anyone. I didn't know how it worked. I didn't know, like, yeah, no people, no promoters, nothing, nothing about contracts and nothing about how things work. So, mm -hmm. but I did, I worked really super incredibly hard, like day and night and that stuff. Like I went to work, um, during the day and then during the nights, so I was just sitting up and, and working on my emailing. Um, so I got us like, I don't know, I think it was maybe. 18 shows or something like uh, wow in a row. yeah on that tour 2015 and then we got back from that it was super hard um i was like yeah i'm gonna book another one <laughs> so we went <laughs> we, we went on in september i think we got us something like 26 dates in europe and uk or something like wow we, yeah that's super hard uh diy spirit you know uh -huh. um, so we did that and after that time, we were approached by a rising empire because they saw that we had a fair amount of like streams and clicks on YouTube um, and that we were able to tour like a lot right. on our own without any like support from agencies or, or labels or whatever. Like we were going pretty strong on our own, on our own at that time. Mm -hmm. So they were interested um, and we were one of the first bands that signed to join their roster at, at that point. Wow. And yeah, and then later on, like you, 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 they hook you up with like a more professional booking agency that has a, a very established network. And, and that's just how it goes, basically. And, and uh, yeah, we put the next album, like, uh, you know, a couple of singles, we put them out, like a song called The Sickness, which is, yeah, this is more than five years ago now. Um, and then after that, we had an album released called This Is Goodbye. And we mm -hmm. were out touring, supporting some bands in Europe. And then, yeah, by late 2018, we, we started to headline, like a real headline um, tour that we did. 
And from there on, like we dropped the next album, Turn the Light On, in 2019. Mm-hmm. So it's just really slow, pro- like a slow progress uh, from the very, very bottom 10 years ago, where I and the rest of the guys in the band have really like walked through every single step on the ladder to, to get where we are today. Um, mm-hmm. Which I think is different if you compare it to a lot of other success- successful bands today. Um, yeah. Where I know that a lot of these members in really good bands, they have done that sort of journey with other projects and then they get together, like they lead that and then they come together with some knowledge and, you know, they're already a few steps ahead on the way, Mm -hmm. um, which is really cool. But we stuck together from the very, very bottom, you know, worked our way up. Yeah, there's not a lot of bands that can do that, can say that they did that, right? Like exactly what you said. They might've been in a band that grinded it out for years upon years and then eventually got together with some other people that had a similar experience and then mm-hmm. their mm-hmm. band forms where you guys started out. I mean, you've known each other since you're kids. Mm. Yeah. I mean, Christian is the latest one and he's been in the band for three years. Yeah. About three years. Um, so he had that sort of experiences before, like he had he played in other bands that we kind of looked up to when we were kids, mm-hmm. um, which was really cool um, that our paths like would cross again. Sure. But, sure. but apart from that, I would say that, yeah, we, we really, you know, we stayed together through thick and thin, really. <laughs> For yeah. sure. Yeah. So you put out, uh, what, did Turn the Light On come out, the, the first version? Because you did an acoustic version of the record, too. Yeah, um, not, all, not all songs, but yeah. But a majority of them. And it sounds awesome. I, I love how bands can do that. Like, it, that says something about your band. If you could be like this metal you know, heavy band and then just totally flip the script yeah, and put yeah. out a, an acoustic version of the, the record, right? They always say, if you can play the song on an acoustic guitar and it's still good, then it's a hit. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. yeah thank you. Thank you for that. But I, mean, I think for us, it's also about trying to, you know, not just make an acoustic version, but to really make a reimagination of the song and mm-hmm. to, to reinterpret that. And that started out because we had on the first, um, on the first album, uh, we had a song called Last Legs that we wanted to do an acoustic version of. And so what we did, like we worked with a producer here in Malmö called Simon. Um, and he was, he was into, like he was producing a lot of pop music, um, which was a very like interesting clash, uh, uh-huh. like where we were coming from and his, you know, and his experience. So what came out of that was a song called A Mark of My Soul, uh, mm-hmm. which is basically, that is basically the acoustic version of, of last legs but the whole vibe and, and feeling and arrangement and melodies of the song changed so much when we did it so it just brought out something completely new and we felt like this is not just an acoustic version this is really yeah a, a reimagination that we mm-hmm. wanted to actually also give it a, a different name um and that's how that started like we didn't want to just play the song over a couple of you know chords over a guitar like we wanted to really find uh, some more nuances and um and work to the very core of what the song is trying to say and and you know put that into a different light so the acoustic parts have always been super important for us like this is almost equally as important as the as the original versions actually mm-hmm. i must say yeah i like that i love that you put out so turn the light on the turn the light on came out in 2019 and then i did read that you did a tour right in the beginning of 2020 january and february yeah yeah that was like literally just before covid hit like, that's what i was going to say so you must have wrapped that up and then how quickly after that did everything shut down we were in, we were in milan we played milan like a few days before the first covid cases were discovered like oh, this wow. is we really like definitely just dodged a bullet and we had no idea, like we heard about it on the news and during the tour and we're like, yeah, something going on over there in China. It sounds really bad. And all of us got ill, like we got so sick on the tour and we you know, usually do given the circumstances, uh-huh. but everyone got the same sort of flu and fever and, you know, and we started thinking about, did we actually get it? Did we get right. the coronavirus? So we didn't test ourselves, but, um, I actually haven't gotten it since, so I might actually have had it, you know, now you during have that time. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I don't know. I have no idea. So that was really, yeah, we were probably one of the last artists to be out touring before everything just, yeah, you know, went total madness over here. 
Right. And you guys caught it a little earlier than us here in the United States. Because yeah. we didn't shut everything down until March, mid-March. Mm. Yeah, and except for Sweden didn't have any, any lockdowns at all. Really? Not, yeah. not the whole time? Yeah, no lockdowns. Like we had some, when it comes to restaurants and bars and, um, and also like, you know, public places like malls or whatever, they had uh, limited opening hours, but no lockdowns at all. Everything that's was still amazing. open. Yeah. Wow. Pretty, pretty crazy. Pretty that crazy. Is, that's really crazy. Yeah. yeah so is. do you, when you guys get home and then, so you're never really stuck inside? Like, I, I guess, explain this no. to me. Yeah, no, no, we were not. Like everything was open. People could, okay, the majority of people that could was working from home, obviously here. Uh, mm -hmm. But everything when it comes to public transport or, yeah, I don't know, everything that, that you know, our, our country was sort of just functioning as, as usual, I would say. Um, of course, you had, yeah, uh, even like gyms and stuff like that and, and were open. Um, they sent the students home, like all schools kind of closed. Um, so they, they had like home education. Mm -hmm. but uh, apart like in our position um yeah we like our lives were if you uh, um not in regards to the band but apart from that our lives were continuing as, as normal mm -hmm. um so yeah it was really strange when you compare it to like we have friends out in europe and uk and us or whatever and then when they explained that they've been stuck at home for like a month right nothing like that for us Wow. So were you able to get together with the band? Like, did, was it just business as usual for a while? I mean, obviously, obviously we were not touring. <laughs> yeah. Aside from that, but yeah. I mean, like you're able to get together. Were you writing? Like, is that kind of what the, the acoustic version of the record came from? Like just time on your hands or. Uh, that was all, that was already written actually, but. Oh, um, really? Yeah. But the new album, Heaven in Hiding um, was written during mostly during the pandemic i think maybe we had one or two demos before that but apart like everything else was written uh, during that time um i was going to eddie's place and uh, we were working on the songs together which was really cool and uh, of course we were a bit careful you know with social distancing and not seeing so many people but we were getting together like only me and him and writing mm -hmm. um so that was actually really good that we could invest in time, our time in this and we could develop other aspects of our band. Like we worked heavily on our, on our web shop that our, our fans really seem to enjoy. And we developed nice products, and nice specials um, during that time, which was a way for us to still like have some sort of connection um, with our fans and for them also to be able to show their support for us and, and buy merch and CDs and whatever, which was really like, you know, um, incredible to have during that time sure was recording this new record heaven and hiding was it hard or was that affected at all by covid or did you were you able to get into a studio record the record yeah we went to yeah we went to uh, the studio of henrik uh, henrik Ud. Uh, he is fantastic producer he worked with you know bring me the horizon architects at the gates oh, wow. you know, he has a studio outside of gothenburg so we went there and we're, we were practically you know locked in there so that was almost like our little lockdown that we were just in the studio the whole time for almost months me and eddie mm -hmm. and uh you know henrik was there as well and sometimes the other guys would come and, and visit also but that that was working working out well um because we decided to you know stay put in the studio and just work there and record it and and uh not really you know socializing a lot with other people during that time um because if we would have gotten ill or if Eddie would have gotten COVID, he wouldn't have been able to sing and mm -hmm. we wouldn't have been able to hang out. So it was really about being careful during that process. For sure. For it was, you said that it was mainly you and Eddie in the studio recording the record. Like, did you have all the parts and then the rest of the guys would come in as needed? Yeah. Like, how, how did the album kind of come together? Uh, uh, well, me and Eddie are the ones writing. And uh -huh. um, of course... If Peter, for example, which is the which is the drummer, if he has some input on the drum parts, he would definitely, you know, uh, put his own little personal touch on it. But um, we recorded like all the instruments and the vocal parts uh, in the studio. Like I was tracking guitars and bass for it, and it was just easier since I had written the stuff um, to just work faster. You know, just if one people one person know how the parts are played, I think it's just easier for you to, you know, pick up the bass or pick up the guitar and just track it. 
Mm -hmm. And afterwards, uh, yeah, Peter, he went in the, in, in the studio later when everything else was already done. So we did the drums last. Um, and obviously also we tracked some cello and stuff like that on, on the very end, which was really mm -hmm. cool, really cool. That is amazing. Have you had a chance to play any shows to support the record? Uh, yeah, so far we actually did. We played, <clears throat> we, we had our first show since the pandemic. We played outside of Prague in Czech Republic um on a smaller version of the um rock for people festival which is a super great festival really and uh, mm, i mean we went from like in, over here in sweden we had a maximum capacity of i think we were uh, maximum 50 people allowed uh, to come together oh um, wow. yeah so we had those restrictions still so you go from that into an airport where everyone is just wearing like face masks and you have to take COVID tests all, all the time. And you go to Czech Republic and you just end up at a festival with 5,000 people in front of you. <laughs> it's just so weird. Like, is this really seriously happening right now? Just to oh. go from, from one thing to another, just like that or over a few hours. So we play that. It was, yeah, it was incredible. It was very, very difficult in a way because it was a long time since you were on stage, but it was, mm -hmm. it was great. And we played a, um, we played a, uh, an indoor festival here in Sweden. Uh, what is it like a month ago, I think, um, which was also weird, you know, when you see like 3000 people in front of the stage, like it's incredible. Um, so that's the two shows we've been doing so far. And it's just it's awesome to be back on stage again. Yeah, I, I, I miss it. Yeah, I miss it so much. That's awesome. And you have some shows coming up in February, I saw. We do, yeah. We actually just announced uh, two release shows in January. That's going to be here in Sweden, Stockholm and Gothenburg. Oh, that's and, awesome. Yeah, that's cool. Then we're going to Finland for a week, um, about seven shows I think we have. And then, then the big tour, uh, Heaven and Hiding album tour, is going to be over... February into March. Uh, after that, we have a, an acoustic tour actually that got pushed from last year that we're doing oh, in cool. April. Yeah, it's going to be great. Where's so, that going to be? It's just, uh, it, it's only going to be in Germany because it's the first time we were doing it. But the concept is really cool. Like we're playing actually smaller concert halls and we bring in a, we bring in a, a string quartet and a guy playing grand piano and some choir vocals. So wow. it's, yeah, it's pretty different. Um, have so you had a chance to like kind of work it out what's going to sound like live there is actually a a live session on youtube which you can check out it's called uh, live in saint nikolai uh which we tr we recorded in in a church um, oh cool yeah with the quartet and it it's a live session of uh, i think it's four songs that you can check out to get a feeling of what we want to achieve on that tour as well that is cool i'm going to definitely check that out because i love yeah. the acoustic versions of your songs thank you thank you yeah it's really really cool and I appreciate you doing this, Harold. This has been awesome. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I do have one more quick question. I want to know if you have any advice for aspiring artists. Uh, I would say that you need to trust yourself that you'll figure it out. Like, just to, to be mindful that you will figure it out somehow and not being afraid of, of daring to dream. Like, you know, you really need to dare to dream. I think so. And, and, uh, and dream big, like, don't be afraid to do that. But of course, you know, you got to be realistic, like what we're at the point where you are at to be humble enough to understand um, where you are and, and the sort of information you need, the, the information you need to, to um, be able to like grow and, and, and climb the next step on the ladder. But I think definitely like, you know, to, to believe in yourself and, and, and not giving up is, is very, very, very important because you can never know if things will work out, but if you don't try, you'll definitely know that it doesn't work out for you. 